Hi, I'm composer and flutist Nicole Chamberlain, and I'm going to tell you how to bind your scores, uh, the larger ones for like orchestra and band. And we'll even get into a little bit of the parts, but our main focus is the score. So I just finished uh, a bassoon concerto, and I need to send it to the ensemble so they can start preparing it. So I need to print it, and I've already printed that. Um, I wouldn't waste your time with that. It took a little bit of time. Um, I have my super fancy printer right here. HP Color Laser Jet CP5225. And it's color and black and white. Um, and it's pretty efficient. Um, and then, <laughs> squeaky chair. Um, and then, the, the choice of paper you use is actually pretty important. Uh, first of all, you want to protect your score. Uh, it's going to be carried around a lot. Uh, some people like the more plastic kind. Um, I like to have a little design on it, so I pick a really heavy card stock uh, type paper. Um, and so this is the cover and have a nice little graphic on the front. Um, and I use the same for the back. And then the insides, and this goes for the parts as well, uh, I have a paper that you cannot see through, especially when it's on the stand, um, and it's just a heavier weight than your standard copy paper. I, I will put all of the links to all of the poundage and the, the brands I use in the comments below. Uh, okay, so I have everything printed. Now we just have to start binding and I have this binder right here it's true bind it's a spiral binder uh, so what can what conductors like is that their scores lay flat and spiral binding addresses that comb binding it's a little rough to turn the pages um, staple binding it, it's really hard to get it stay flat especially the page that is not center so spiral binding is the best way to go. Now, you may have noticed my binder is not long enough. There's two ways you can address this. You can try to just center the binding in the middle, and then you'd have some that aren't, um, aren't really bound. I like to do all the way down binding. It's a little bit trickier, but I'm not doing too many of them. Uh, and so what I'm gonna have to do, and I'll show you this up a little closer, is that I'll feed the paper in right at the top, I'll punch the holes, and then I'll feed it down a little bit more and punch the rest of the holes. I have an open end binder. And so what that means is that it's not closed, and so I can actually fits the paper, if this thing's off, I'll just show you this way, I can fit it and have hangover, which is problematic with a lot of binders. So when you're shopping for your binder, make sure it's open-ended, uh, or if you take it to Kinko's, they may not know that that's a thing they have, and they do typically have them. Um, I guess it's now FedEx Kinko's. I'm aging myself. Anyway, most coffee shops might have something like this where it's open binded because it's or open ended because it is an industrial tool. They usually have fancier ones. Um, but if you're doing a lot of large ensemble stuff, it's worth the money. It's not that bad, um, and it's a tax write off if you're living life as a composer or a publisher. So next, we're gonna bind this sucker. So let's get up close and personal to my workspace. Okay, I think I have it figured out. Um, there's a little nubbin over here, and I forgot you can select your margin. And so I think I got a better margin for this paper. You want to experiment with that. So, okay, again, we're going in. Now I'm going to flip it over. Now I have a good comb bind. And I got a, a nice little margin here, so hopefully it'll, it'll endure a little bit longer. Let's do the, uh, the cover. 
So you gotta make sure you have the cover uh, on the correct size, right? You want, you want it on the left. So I got it in there. Chunk. Fingers crossed. Hooray! All worked out. Let's do the same exact thing on the back side. So, this is the back. It's gonna be on the left. Or I mean, on the right. <laughs> the other one was on the left side. This one's on the right side. Mm. Is it confusing enough? No? Just wait, I'll make it confusing. guideline. Everything straight. Worked out. Fantastic. Okay. So time to do the innards. Um, I forget how many pages. Oh, 20 sheets of paper or four sheets of PVC cover. All right. So this thing is a full concerto. So it's like 121 printed pages, probably more than that with the program notes. So I'm going to be very cautious. Make sure I don't print on the wrong side because I have done, or cut on the wrong side because I have done that. Mm. And I've made a mistake. Um, I should have gone a little <laughs> less pages because it's heavier weight. This is 28 pound. Um, and so it's a, it's a bit much for this. I should have cut it in half maybe, or at least a couple pages less, but I'm committed now. So there we go. There's a lot of resistance on that. All right. Put that down. This is the top. So you, when you're printing these out uh, or doing the layout, make sure you have enough margin to do this. You don't want to be too close to the edge. That was way too much paper. <laughs> really testing the limits of this binder. So we're going to bind this thing, um, and I'm already having some regrets. I don't think my spiral is going to be big enough. <sighs> it's been a, everything. <laughs> we're going to try it. It probably won't. I don't think it's going to open. Um, I don't think it's going to work. But we'll see. So I'm just going to sandwich it. So at least I can show you what I'm supposed to do. Um, I like to start it with it kind of um, hanging off the edge so I can work it. Excuse my uh, dirty floor. All right. So I'm going to, this is, this is like, this is not going to cut it. I think I need to order a bigger spiral or I'm going to have to. I'm gonna have to um, break this up into movements, which I don't, I don't think is a good idea either. This is this. Yes. I'll probably get it going, but then and thread it through. But will it open? I don't know. like shopping for coil I was like oh I'll never I'm only doing like 10 minute pieces 
Even at full orchestra, it will never be that long. <laughs> oh, this, this might work, but it's going to be snug. We'll see. I might have to work it back out and buy a bigger coil. It'll be like breaking in brand new shoes. And when it goes to whip it open, it may not open up. I can't even get it down anymore. It's because he won't be able to lay that flat. It'll never work. All right, guess what I have to do? I have to buy a bigger coil. Okay, new day, new solutions. So, um, I got a bigger coil, a much bigger coil, uh, but it's not long enough. So apparently, they don't exist unless you have a bazillion dollars. So I'm gonna just uh, put something together like I used to back in the day. Um, so what I typically like to do, don't mind my bedroom slippers, um, is I put it on the edge. I find a little bit better if I can thread it through off the table. Oops. I need to work it with the back. Um, and then once I get it going, it kind of feeds itself. So you know you have the right size when it's not a chore. So earlier it wasn't big enough and so like I couldn't even thread it this far. So I'm just going to thread this guy all the way down. I get to the very end. So I, it probably feels really dumb to do it this way. Like I should have thrown it from the bottom, but I want everything to work in the same direction when it opens. So least resistance for the conductor. As you know, you need to fly pages open. You don't wanna you don't wanna be working in the binding or anything. Anything you can do to make the conductor's life a little easier. All right, so I'm also gonna just um, feed it a little bit past the bottom so I can make a cut and crimp it. All right, so I got that done. Um, so now I'm gonna feed the other part to get the top. And then I'll, we'll find out together how <laughs> I'll crimp them together in the middle to keep things from working themselves out. All right. Um, part of me wants to just somehow, yeah, double it up. Okay. See, it lies nice and flat now. All right, that's a big man pajama. You don't realize how big something is until you put it together. I'm gonna wanna cut it and then crimp it to the inside. So I'm just gonna get it right here. And the red dot has to be, that's the cutting side. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Oh boy. And then I should be able to like kind of crimp it and twist it inside so that it, you know, or just break it off again. Um, oh, jeepers. I want to bend it. There we go. Kind of want to bend it so that it doesn't work its way out. Um, that way it doesn't work its way out in the heat of the, the moment there. And I think I'm going to do the same um, with the end here first. So I'm going to cut it. And then I want to, oh boy, I want to bend that so it doesn't work its way out. There you go. Okay, and I think I'm gonna somehow marry these two in the middle so they won't work out either. 
I'm just giving them a twist. So they can't work out either. Great. Okay. So there we go. <laughs> a solution to my problem. And now when I open it, like it opens up, they can open up um, full view. And he has plenty of space to like rip the thing open. And that's it. That is one way of doing it. Show you how I do the parts. It's very much like, it's exactly like how I do my chamber ensemble stuff. So you can check that video out where I go through the whole process of staple binding and making parts. So I just have that heavyweight paper. I have my bone folder, very, very old school. Just fold it down in the middle. And then I have my stapler. It's a very long stapler. And then I just eyeball it and I put in three staples. Top, ooh, that wasn't so straight. Middle and bottom. And that's it. That's my parts. I have a nice title page. And then, um, you know, the usual shenanigans on the inside. And I just have to do that like a hundred more times. <laughs> oh my God. That's it. Here it is. <laughs> a lot. It's 124 or five pages total, um, all bound. Uh, and so that's it. All I got to do is ship it to the commissioner. Um, you know, it didn't turn out as I wanted to. I wanted it to turn out like this old score I had, but it is a lot thinner. You know, all one piece, very tidy. But it's not, it's not the same piece. It's bigger. It's a good problem to have. Um, but hopefully you'll find uh, what I used as a launching point or uh, to bind your own or maybe a reminder that you did it in the past and forgot. Um, the same method works for smaller ones. This is a smaller orchestration. It's just string ensemble and flutes. So, you know, it's like uh, seven parts on a stave or on a system. Um, and so it was shorter and it's not, not nearly as thick. I mean, you can tell the difference between these two. Um, and I just needed larger binders. Now I have a hundred more combs than I need probably. Uh, I will put a link to all of the items I used in this whole process. And hopefully you can get binding your own scores and uh, launch yourself and do this yourself. You don't need a publisher. You can do it yourself and you can keep control out of all the aspects of your creative material. Hope this was helpful. Uh, if not, if you had some questions, just shoot me a comment or just reach out to me and I'm, I'll try my best to answer as soon as I can. Just, you just need to be a little stubborn. Um, took me a few extra days because of shipping in a pandemic, but other than that, it was, it was pretty easy. Uh, thanks. And, uh, you know, su subscribe. I'm going to do a lot more other composery uh, videos about how to's and navigating the waters. <laughs>